Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Today we're taking an in-depth look between two Ibanez guitars, the semi hollow body AS95 FM and the full hollow body AMH90. I was very much interested in either of the two guitars because I wanted to test out and try out a semi hollow or a hollow bodied guitar because I've never tried them before and it's something that I found very very alluring and interesting. So when I started to actually investigate and do some research I landed on either the AS or the AM line of the guitars right but then I started to have uh, quite a bit of of a difficulty in trying to find resources what are the exact differences between the two models yeah how are they similar how are they different because when you take a look at the currently available videos online between these two first of all there's very few videos that compare the two directly second of all even less of the videos actually talk about the differences between the two yet when you take a look at these two guitars on paper on the Ibanez side, they look almost identical, right? It actually takes even a little bit more investigation to understand that the uh, there's a bit of differences in sizes and stuff like that. So once I understood that they're two different guitars, even though they seemingly look almost identical on paper, one thing was my main kind of source of logic, which was Ibanez wouldn't make any producer wouldn't make two identical lines of um, guitars and name them differently. So obviously something has to be different between the two. So I ordered both of them to try them out and to see if one of them actually is a better fit for me, if either of them are, are a fit for me, and if I'm going to be returning both of them, one of them, and if I'm going to keep one, and if I do, which one will it be? So let's dive into the comparison between the Ibanez AS95 and the AMH90 guitars. The guitars that I have ordered and that I have reviewed here are the AS95 FM in the VLS um, tone, which is the violin burst, and the AMH90 Cherry Red Flat. So CRF, I believe, C Cherry Red Flat, yeah. So let's go over the specs and the general overview of uh, each of the guitars. AS95 is a full bodied electric guitar, which means that it has pretty much the same dimensions as the Gibson 355. So a pretty large guitar. It is a semi hollow construction, which means that in the middle it has a big chunk of maple that is connected to the front and the back panel. So it's a supporting beam. It has a set in neck, but the left and right uh, halves are hollow. Contrary to what the spec sheet actually says, because the spec sheet says that it's a flamed top, back and sides, and that's true for the surface. Once you actually put the camera inside of the guitar, which I did because I was very curious to see how it's constructed, the first thing that uh, struck me as a surprise was it's not actually made out of maple, it's actually made out of what really looks like mahogany. So the construction of the AS95 is actually mahogany with the maple, flamed maple veneer on top of the sides, back and top. Now, the matching of these sides on this particular model was absolutely gorgeous and it is incredible, especially on the back. It was incredible how they matched it to be so, so nice. Something that I really didn't expect for this price range. This is something that I would normally associate with a much, much, much higher end guitar. So it was a very nice thing to see. AS93 has um, a Gibraltar Performer Bridge and a Quick Change 3 tailpiece, which is basically slotted on top so that you don't have to uh, slot the strings through the tailpiece, but actually goes on top and it's much easier and quicker that way. We have two Super 58 uh, pickups, which are Ibanez's pickups, and they are passive Alnico pickups. They sound great. I really like the, the, the frequency response, the dynamic response, and everything around them. This is one of the rare guitars, or both of them, because they both have the same pickups, are rare factory guitars where I didn't feel instantly it's like, oh, it's going to be better once I change the pickups. Actually, no, th this is already quite, quite 
good, which again for the price range was a nice surprise. Even though on the AS95 uh, out of the box they came way too high, they were like super super high, which made them ultra boomy and kind of uh, muddy so once you lower them down to something more sensible then the guitar actually opens up and starts singing and you get a little bit more of mid-range tonality which is an important thing to know so make sure that you adjust in the the pickup levels on the AS95 correctly once you get it. Hardware color on the AS95 is gold. The neck is a satin neck. It's an AS Expressionist profile which is extremely comfortable to play um, it's something between a um, Gibson and a Strat. It's comfortable enough to set the thumb on the back of it and play that way if you want to do some um, yeah, chords or arpeggios or whatever it may be. But also when you're just kind of rocking out and you want to have fun, it's comfortable enough to swap that thumb around, either have the free thumb <laughs> over there or use it for the sixth string to play notes that way as well. So I found it very versatile and extremely comfortable in pretty much in most of the situations that I've played the AS95 in. The scale is 628 millimeters, width at the nut is 43 millimeters, with a string spacing of 10.5 millimeters. Net width at the 22nd fret, and it has only 22 frets, is 57 millimeters, and the neck thickness at the first fret is 21 millimeters, and it goes up to 24 millimeters by the 9th fret. Fingerboard radius is 305 millimeters, which makes it kind of roundish and nice to play. So it's not too round, not too flat, for me at least, just right. The construction of the neck is a three-piece Nyoto maple construction with a dual action truss rod. We have a bound Makassar ebony fretboard with acrylic block inlays that actually look very, very nice. Medium frets across the board, as I said, 22 of them. And as standard, the AS95 is using a uh, 1052 string set. We have a fairly standard uh, three-position pickup switcher selector, which doesn't do anything fancy, so you can pick up the neck humbucker, both humbuckers in the mid position and in the lower position the bridge humbucker. No split coil functionality or anything like that. And you also have the separate volume and tone control for each of the pickups which is definitely something that gives you a huge palette of tonal control. AS93FM model is available as far as I know in three colors. So you have cherry red, you have the violin burst that I'm showing here and you also have a newly, relatively newly added antique yellow low sunburst. But you also have other variations, some made out of ebony and other woods, so that really depends on these, but here I'm focusing on the FM series. The AMH is the fully hollow version of the AAM series of the Ibanez guitars, so therefore it's AM H hollow 90 series and in this case it's CRF which is cherry red flat. Now this guitar also comes in two other colors. It has the black which is glossy black really stylish with the gold hardware. You have the cherry red here which is the only one that has a flat finish and you have the new edition which is the PBM or what it's called Prussian blue metallic which has metallic flakes and it's also as far as I understand it high gloss. All three guitars come with the gold hardware as standard. The body construction of the AMH90, as I said, it's fully hollow, but it's also made out of linden, which incidentally, uh, linden flower tea is one of my favorite teas out there. So that was an interesting thing to kind of coincidence to see. As a wood, it's it has a very nice mid kind of uh, brightness and very good tonality. It's not too bright. It's definitely not too muddy or anything like that. So I like how that sounds. And it's a very interesting choice for this guitar because because it makes it sound different than the others that you may have tried. Unlike the AS95, this one is truly made out of uh, linden all the way. Now, if it's multi-layered linden or not, most likely because it has all the bands and creases and all that kind of stuff, but it is not a mahogany with linden. It is. It seems that it's a full-on linden construction of the body. The body dimensions are at the front. Uh, they're pretty much the same, the, the dual cuts that you have on top. 
and the position of the resonator holes is identical and the size of the holes are, is identical as on the AS95 but the actual bottom <laughs> or the butt of the guitar is quite a lot smaller in dimension so in total it's a little bit smaller as a guitar which makes it a little bit more comfortable and easier to handle. In addition AS95 because of that big huge chunk of maple in the middle it weighs at around four kilos. A stark contrast to that is the AMH90 which weighs at around 2.7 kilos which is really really comfortable. However you have to be aware that because it has a hollow body this is a head heavy guitar so it will tilt. That is something that's completely unavoidable because it's a hollow construction. Then again, at that weight of 2.7, it's so comfortable and so nice to play. You just pick it up and it's like nothing and it's super, super cool to have that. It has the same Gibraltar Performer bridge as the AS95, but because it's a hollow construction, it has a tailpiece, which I think it's called VT06. I know nothing about that tailpiece, except that it looks nice and it resonates nicely. So there's that too. Now, when you stick a camera inside of the AMH90 to inspect its construction, you will see that indeed it is completely different as far as the construction goes. It is fully hollow. It has three maple blocks, one at the front where the set neck is, one at the bottom for the tailpiece and the neck strap, and one in the middle for the bridge to hold the bridge. And that's it. Everything else is fully hollow and you have the, yeah, the standard uh, a reinforcement construction that you can see here in the images. Overall, for me, it was really interesting to see how different these guitars are from the inside, and um, that explains a lot how, why they are actually two different instruments and how they perform differently as well. AMH uses the same Super 58 uh, passive Alnico pickups that the AS95 does, and the same comment goes for them here as well great tonal and dynamic range and clarity. The neck has the same profile, so it's the same AM Expressionist uh, three-piece Nyota maple construction. Uh, it's a set-in neck. It has dual action truss rod, same 628 millimeter scale, 43 millimeter nut. Uh, it expands down to 57 millimeters at the 22nd fret, 21 millimeter thickness at the first fret, 24 millimeters at the ninth fret, and same 305 millimeter radius. So, for all intents and purposes, it should be identical. Out of the box, it didn't play the same. AS95 was more comfortable simply because the action was set differently. There's some differences in the body as well because I found that on the AS95, it was far, far easier to get the comfortable lower action or whatever kind of action you wanted out of the box. And the tail had a lot more range to actually play around with, so you could achieve super low action if that's what you were looking for. Even though on a guitar like this, that doesn't make too much sense, but if you wanted to, you could at least do it. That's not the case on the AMH90. So the construction is different. The way the neck is set is different. The tummy of the body is slightly different and all of that results that if you want something a little bit more of a comfortable action playing action on the AMH90 you'll have to pretty much like lower the bridge all the way down and I had to adjust the um, neck truss rod quite quite a lot that's nothing really different it's totally normal that you have to adjust the guitar once you get it from the factory I'm just saying that the factory setup was a big difference between the AS95 AS95 was very nicely set up for a factory setup AMH90 was like whoa way over the place and like super bent neck and super high strings and really uncomfortable to play uh, out of the box as a factory setup. However, once you actually do that setup, you are definitely able to get it to pretty much exactly the same level of comfort playing uh, as on the AS95 and then the neck does feel the same. Back to the neck, we have the same bound Makassar ebony fretboard, but this time with abalone dot inlays. So no block inlays, just the dot inlays. One other thing that I noticed as well is that the black dots on the side on the uh, uh, on the binding of the fretboard. Uh, on the AS95, they were smack in the middle, really, really precise. But on the AMH90, they were slightly lower than the middle. Not a big deal, but something to also kind of keep in mind if that's something that will drive you insane. 
22 medium frets uh, on both of them, but uh, they I measured them also with the calipers and the the height of the frets is the same, but the width of the frets is slightly more narrower on the AS95. Gold hardware, as I said, on the AMH90 as well. And the standard string set uh, is 1052, same as on the AS95. As far as the uh, pickup controls and tone controls go, well, tones, we have the same thing. We have uh, dual volume or separate volume and tone control for each of the humbuckers. And we have a three position switch for the pickup selector, which is the neck, both together or the bridge. So, so far that's the same, but a AMH also has one more switch at the back, which they are calling super creatively a tree sound switch, which is basically your coil split switcher. This switch will allow you to uh, control only the neck pickup uh, switching and when it's all the way down then it's connected in series when it's in the middle then it's a single and when it's all the way up then uh, the pickup is wired in parallel mode this allows you for a very very nice uh, kind of versatility as far as the tone goes and it's something that I very much liked on the AMH90 some other differences between the two guitars are the knobs basically the knobs themselves they're really nice on both of them really really practical and beautiful on the AS95 with that kind of rubberized and ridged uh, top side so that it's much much easier to kind of uh, uh, control them with the pinky or whatever and the AMH90 has these weird kind of black weirdish gummy plastic design with just a white dot and that's not going to be up to everybody's taste, but that's something that I really actually like. So very different uh, uh, pot caps on both of the guitars and they generally give them a different feel. For me, the AMH90 is a more vintagey type of a feel, whereas the AS95 is more classy kind of a ooh -la, la type of a feel. Both guitars have the same type of uh, plastic nut. Um, they also have the same uh, uh, tuners, which are fine. There's nothing fancy, but nothing catastrophic. They work fine. The headstock is different on both of them. Uh, headstock on the AMH90 is smaller and has a different inlay than the one that the AS95 has. So different inlays and a different headstock altogether. So already now, when you actually put them, you know, back to back with the specs and you really kind of look at the details a lot of details are starting to surface that these two guitars are actually quite different guitars so now that we know what they are and what the differences and similarities are let's hear how they actually sound which is the whole point now the test that i've done i wanted it to be clinical for that reason what you're listening is actually di so this is a guitar like a cable going from the guitar into my audio interface no amp modelers no cabinet modelers no compressors no limiters nothing just one poof and that's pretty much it on top of the recording itself i've added just a little bit of room reverb so that it doesn't sound super dry but it's not like drenched in reverb or anything like that and there's also one example where i've passed the guitars through a fx chain a delay and a little bit of uh, stronger reverb and things like that to kind of see how does the guitar and how does the tone of the guitar um, handle multiple effects chain all right so here we go
All right, so those were clean examples. And now for a little bit driven examples, the drive that I was using is the Boss OD3. And it was like smack in the middle, everything, including the gain. <laughs> So it's time now to draw a conclusion between the AS95 and the AMH90 Ibanez guitars. And I'm going to start with the shared cons and pros for both of them. So first of all, both have plastic nuts, which are fine, but they do require you to actually take a graphite pen and add some graphite in the slots to make sure that these strings will actually slide because there were cases, for example, in both of them, string D was not really happy to be tuned. So until I added the graphite, once I added the graphite, everything was fine. So that's something to keep in mind. Both come with the pickup height set way too high out of the box and that's pretty much it as far as the neg uh, shared negatives go now the shared positives for the both guitars is that they're both beautiful really each one in their own way gorgeous guitars once they are set up properly they both play wonderfully the sound on both is really nice and very very versatile and actually different so each one is versatile and really good sounding in different fields from each other construction on both guitars is very stable and they are both able to hold the tune quite nicely and both are an unbelievable value for money like really on both of them i constantly had to remind myself what the price for these was because it really is hard to believe and it's also mind-blowing what the Ibanez Indonesia factories are pumping out for these prices. It's, it's really astonishing value for money. And now for the comparative negatives and positives when we're comparing them between each other. So AS95, when compared to AMH90, uh, the cons are that it has slightly cheaper electronics because you can hear a little bit of crackle and the uh, tonal response is 
pretty much not as good as it was on the AMH90, but the difference is very, very small, but it is there. It is considerably heavier because it's larger in body and it has a ginormous chunk of, you know, full on maple in the middle. It's quite large, which may be a con for some, but I found it very comfortable because of the, um, the tummy that it has and how it's organized. Your elbow just sits very nice on it. But if you have a limited playing space, it is a very large guitar. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. And it's actually made out of mahogany with maple, flame maple veneer, not out of maple as it's stated in the product specs on the Ibanez website. Now on the pro side of things, AS95, because of that huge chunk of maple in the middle, it has more sustained in the AMH90. It is maybe a little bit more traditionally beautiful than the cherry red flat that I have here, simply because of the beautiful violin sunburst that, that finish that it has in a high gloss finish. It really is of exquisite quality. And when you compare the, the halves of the flamed maple veneer that were chosen and how they they were paired it is quite a striking and a beautiful instrument to uh, play hold and behold the block inlays are a very nice thing to have out of the box it's easier to play and the action it's easier to actually set up the action to whatever you may want it to uh, when compared to the amh 90. now it's possible to do it on both of them it's just that on the as95 for whatever reason whatever the construction differences the tummy differences or whatever else may be the case it is a bit easier to get the action that you want and to get there faster now the AMH90, uh, comparative pros and cons with the AS95. So the AMH90 has less sustain because it is a fully hollow body. So it doesn't have a chunk of maple in the middle. The matte finish on the cherry red that I picked may not be for everyone. This is something that I personally really like, but if you don't like that, you do have the black and you do have the Prussian blue metallic options and those are high gloss and they look beautiful, but none of them actually show the wood itself. Itself. So if the structure of the wood, the texture of the wood and all that kind of stuff is what you're looking for, that's not what you will be able to find on the AMH90 series and that might not be for everyone. AMH90 comes with a really super high action and uncomfortable setup out of the box, uh, giving you a false impression that it is harder to play than the AS95. So that's something that you definitely have to keep in mind. The second negative is that because of that factory setup, how it comes you know out of the box it requires a bit more setup of the neck and the bridge and all of these kinds of things to kind of get it to a much more comfortable playing state or uh, action, if you will. That being said, it is possible to set it up. It's not really that difficult. It just requires some more kind of uh, uh, truss rod adjustments. I mean, for example, in my case, I had to unwind it because it's a dual action truss rod and start going in the opposite direction to actually start straightening out the neck. And also the bridge had to go pretty much all the way down to kind of lock it all the way down to get the action the way I wanted it to be or basically as the same as it was on the AS95. However, when you do that, then it's all great. Now onto the positive sides or the pros of the AMH90 when compared to the AS95. Well, right out of the box at 2.7 kilos, it is considerably lighter than the 4 kilo AS95. And that is a big positive as far as I'm concerned because it's incredibly comfortable to use on longer uh, sessions. It has a richer and a better defined mid-range than the AS95. And it also has far more harmonics that are just really coming on top of each other because of the hollow construction, because of the tailpiece, because of all of those differences. Yeah, the sustain is a bit lower, but the harmonics, the complexity of harmonics and the way they are layering on top of each other is a very different story tonality wise than the AS95. The matte finish is a big pro for me because it, the neck itself is less sticky. So high gloss finish is usually a little bit sticky. Some people don't care. I do care. For me, I like the matte finish much better. And that was one of the reasons why I picked the cherry red instead of the black one, uh, because the black one is high gloss and that one would also have the sticky kind of a neck 
feel. It is slightly smaller than the AS95 and it's easier to handle in a limited space and easier to play because of that. And also it has a much wider tonal palette than the AS95 because of the three-way switch, whatever they call it, the, the coil split switch, and the ability to have series parallel and a single on the neck pickup on the AMH90. What's the conclusion and what did I do with these guitars? Well, first of all, I have to iterate that both of these guitars are excellent instruments and an unbelievable value for money, each one in their own right. What was truly surprising for, to me at least was just how different they really are in reality. On paper, they look incredibly similar and as I said, that was the whole reason and the motivation to do this experiment. When I would grab the AS95, it would always make me want to play harder, more rocky, bluesy, more driven type of sound with the pick just kind of chugging it very nicely. And it's super satisfying to do that because of the sustain, because of the resonance, because of that big body, the vibrations and everything. It just is really enjoyable to play harder stuff. Of course, you can play uh, easier jazzy things as well, but by no means are any either of these guitars limited to those uh, genres alone. I mean, AS95 can rock a lot really, really nicely. And it's incredibly good at that. Then when I would grab the AMH90, uh, there would be a complete shift. Uh, pick would almost instantly be dropped onto the desk. I would start playing with my fingers and it would take me on a completely different musical journey than the AS95. So a completely different type of inspiration. And I found myself playing the AMH90 in a very different way than any other guitar that I have or have played, resulting in different ideas and different compositions and different things being poured out from that instrument. So the bottom line for me is this, if I could keep them both, I would do so very gladly because I enjoyed playing both of them equally and in different types of ways because they inspired me to play different types of music, different genres of music and different, they took me in different directions, but equally pleasantly and well. However, being in a situation where I'm forced to choose only one of them. For me personally, the AMH90 is a better fit simply because it's more inspiring and yeah, it's just generally a better fit for all of the reasons that make it so different to the AS95. Amidst all of those reasons, there's one that stands out above all of the rest, and it's this one. I really, really like the AS95 for an excellent guitar that it is, but I have fallen completely in love into this particular AMH90 that I have here, and for that reason, it stays with me. I hope that you enjoyed the video and that you found it useful, and I hope that it helps in the future or in present to somebody else who was on a similar quest like me, which was trying to choose between these two guitars and to find a little bit more comprehensive info and a bit more comprehensive comparison between these two seemingly similar but very different guitars. If you did like the video, you found it interesting or useful, please do consider liking and subscribing to the My Deep Guide channel. Even though it is mainly focused on the e-ink and e-paper technology and reviews, I do occasionally review guitars and basses and I plan to do that a little bit more frequently in the future, so you might find something that is of interest to you. Either way, thank you so much for watching, stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye!